they tried to put the hand back on for like eight hours and I just remember the doctor opening my eyes to the surgeon just like I'm still alive just please tell me I'm still alive it starts here of course I know that there's nothing out there that can make this happy What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in. Another episode of FYI Podcast with Paul Tully. This is FYI, where we're finding our inspiration and we follow it. Today, we got a special guest here. We got Chantel Capri Lewis. Talk to us. Where are you from? Tell me your story. I'm born and raised in Southern California in uh, Oxnard, California. Ah. Uh, so that's like an hour north of L.A. Right. Um, gosh, I've been a performing artist since I can remember. First ballet shoes at three years old. Uh, got my first agent at seven years old. Wow. As an actor, did nothing but like community theater, so a ton of musicals, like um, just, you know, in my hometown. Yeah. And I mean, didn't grow up with the means to, you know, come out to LA and be this like actor or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, parents divorced around like 10 years old, and it was just financially just nothing but struggle my entire life did you stay with mom or dad after the divorce it was back and forth it ah, was a split home me you too know? Sure. so at 18 I, I joined this acting studio and it's like this is my dream so what i'm gonna do broke as a joke no idea i'm all over the place this is this is a huge um hairstylist and she's very successful in that world um and i started doing makeup on the side because i'm like i don't rem- remember life without makeup yeah you know in theater and dance um became a professional celebrity makeup artist almost overnight which was wow. kind of wild it was just like yeah that must be something i knew are you working with like mainly like actors or or singers musicians everything uh, models everything. Wow. Uh, actors singers musicians uh red carpet, this, photo shoots, to weddings, to wow. Carol Smith that I've, you know, just wants to look pretty for a date. Like, wow. I, you know, like, so I think I love that aspect it's of the cool. makeup world because, one, it's finally not about me. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Not about the actor. Like, I can give something. <laughs> yeah. I think that was something that was, like, missing where I was, like, I have all this, uh, hmm, I don't know, like, love and, and like energy to give yeah it's so focused on this like one thing that's an actor and before a very significant moment in my life I was the wasn't pretty enough wasn't skinny enough I'm not talented enough I'm never gonna make it as an actor I mean just bah, 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 like yeah. body dysmorphia like just not in a really good place um and then in 2009 I was in a car accident uh, and that day changed my life forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. What was um, happening that night? How'd the accident happen? So, like any other day, literally like any other day, I'm at a girlfriend's house. I was working at a salon, like front desk at the time, as I was, you know, pursuing my acting career, and actually, my acting career was on a roll, I just booked this HBO series, I just, I was like, get, booking, wow. booking, booking, I was doing all these horror films, and then I just popped up, um, I had to work in the morning, and I was like, I have to go, it was very interesting, it was like this energetic pull, it was like, I have to mm. go, she's like, are you sure you don't want to stay, I was like, no, I have to get up early in the morning, it's like, in that moment, it's like, I, I'm going to go home. And just driving down Wilshire here in Los Angeles. And there was a huge semi truck that literally just like cut off the left side of my driver's seat and took my hand on impact. Wow. Wow. Um, you know, I, I always say, like, I haven't told this story in a while, but I've told it so many times yeah. uh, that it's. That instant, like I said, changed my life. But I always say the gift of perspective. I didn't die that day. Uh, They tried to put the hand back on for like eight hours. And I just remember the doctor opening my eyes to the surgeon, just like, I'm still alive. Just please tell me I'm still alive because I need to be here. Like there's still something on this planet for me. There there has to be a purpose. Like if I survive this, Chantel, like, come on, let's go. Like, let's, what, where was that girl? Like, not pretty enough, not skinny enough, like all those things. Like, let's go. And the wild thing is, 
I ran with that. I ran with like the sky is bluer, the grass is greener. Like I'm just so happy to be alive. And here I am today telling this story 15 years later and I want to get back to her because it came full circle. Like I, I was in this place. I was I was on stage at Ronnie's Theater at 68. Yeah. I got back on stage two weeks later with a bandaged hand. Got up, no on, did this play, and actually Jeremy <laughs> ended up doing that role with me, which is wild. Got a standing ovation, like this whole thing. So then it turned into like. Chantel, you're such an inspiration. So I'm like, <laughs> am I? I'm like, I don't know. I'm surviving, right? So I, and then I was, I was doing like uh, speaking engagements, not like a TED talker, but you know, inspiring, um, telling my story. <laughs> and yeah. Then it became, you're such an inspiration. I became this huge marathon runner. I think that was a lot of my therapy. Um, oh, nice. I was like running with Nike. I was like doing like just all these like things. And then I crashed. It came crashing yeah. in because I'm like, yo, I have not been dealing with this stuff. Right. And it's, you know, and but at the same time, like, I survived, like, the darkest, darkest, darkest hour of my life where I, I'd say, like, I didn't want to be here, but I mm. went, I didn't want to be here. You right. know what I mean? So right. it wasn't, I would never do anything. I, you know, sure. I'll never take my life. Like, sure. I just, you know, my faith is everything. I love my mama. I love my dog. And I'm like, yeah. but I can't, I can't, I couldn't do it anymore. I just hear. And that's what I'm saying. When people are like, it's called self-love, babe. It's like when you really start to, you know, value yourself, then you're going to attract the right person. Like, I know all this intellectually. I can speak it to everybody, but like, it's it's here. Yeah. Like, all that stuff. I was the same thing. It's like, okay, something bad happens. Yeah, it's tough, like, tough enough. Yeah. It, 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 that, that's life. Yeah, suck and it up. Figure it out. And what are you going to do? Be sad. And I used to, that's the thing. Like, after my accident, I was like, life could suck or could be really freaking awesome. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to live the awesome way. And I did that. Yeah. I did that, like, solid. Let's talk about, let's talk about that. Let's talk about this, the, the relationship stuff. Did you... Before your accident, did you find yourself with the insecurities or or the uh, the the need of love and and attend, or do you think that's something from prior that that's I trauma think that goes or way down to childhood? Okay, way down to parents divorced when I'm eight years old and that's all of a sudden daddy's just gone. Yeah, you know, and then he's like back, but then he's not, you know, and then. And I've, I've, I've always been a hopeless romantic. That, that was my cute way of saying, like, I love love. I love it so much. I love being loved. I have so much love to give that I'm like, if it's not reciprocated, I feel like I'm dying. Like, mm. I'm like, mm, okay. I, there's, some, there's some work in that area as well. And I'm not denying that. But I was in a 10-year relationship that ended abruptly four years ago, literally two weeks before COVID hit. I was a mess. COVID hits, um, I'm replaying, I mean, the tent at my person, and I'm alone, and I'm stuck, and that's where I, my sister put me on a 5150, or she, sorry, she didn't put me, she called to get me help, and I, when I said the words, which you have to be very careful, yeah. I was like, I don't want to live in this space. Right. That was scary. Wow. I want to write a movie called 72 Hours, because... You can't write those characters. It was wild. Now, was there was there substances in this journey? Any? Um, I I mean, I you know, I, I've been sober twenty four years, but oh, wow. you know, I had a yeah, I had a you know, my my younger years, I was I was drinking a lot, and I think well that did that. I was drinking a lot. Yeah, it was COVID. Everybody, the, sure. like what else we you know. I think every girlfriend was, so it's like it felt normal. It's like, are we alcoholics? No, it's three <laughs> o'clock, right? It used to be five o'clock, but you know, it's three. Right. what else? It's we... COVID. But no, I mean, <laughs> COVID there was... hours, and it was just numbing the pain. Yeah. I was just numbing, numbing the pain. I couldn't deal with that reality. I, again, I was sleeping till like noon because yeah. I didn't want to wake up. I'd rather just be in, you know, like I didn't want to face. Um, so going through that breakup and healing, I did a 300-hour yoga training. I was doing, I was getting better, all these things. And then I meet this person that was 
equally as probably sick as I was mm -hmm. at that time. Before I went in the military, before I become an actor, you know, I got in a lot of trouble. I was a different human being. I was, you know, a pretty rambunctious uh, person. And um, uh, I know that this, this substances definitely add to, to oh. our, you know, self-loathing and our, our like hatred depression. and depression. I mean, it is a depressant. Like, yeah, at that time... It was, I mean, it wasn't like wake up and drink. Like, right. you know, it was like I'd still do my yoga. I'd still run. I'd, I'd still do yeah, all still the things. productive. I'd but still like that inspiring girl that I'm supposed to be, right? Chantal, you're supposed to do all these things. And then at night, let's just drink a bottle of wine. Let's escape. And then escape and not really deal with it. And then wake up and do the same over and over and over. Yeah, um, yeah until that got really, uh, like, just grow. Like, that's the, who, who is this person? Yeah. But when I was in that time and I met the abusive one, um, yeah, I mean, he was a mess, I was a mess, and it was, we were having the time of our lives, so. <laughs> we were having the time of our lives, but my best friend, like, all the things, I mean, the sign, the red flags were there, Yeah, there was violence and anger, and, you know, from, the, whatever, it's not about him, <laughs> please, <laughs> right, right, but sometimes control. that insanity, right, is what we're, when we're not uh, clicking on all cylinders, and we're not really aligned the way we're supposed to be, it's the insanity that we're inviting, I mean, the toxicity, yeah. that's what we love, the, in, the, in the passion of the love, and the fighting, the rage, and the drinking, and the forgetting, that's part of it, that's part of the excitement, well, it turned to that, I would say, because, it starts off different. It starts, well, yeah. It was like the tenure destroyed me. That relationship right. destroyed me. Next right. level, like, I, that's, you know, just uh, terrible. Like, who, I don't know who I was. I was just, I was literally reborn. I, like, wow. died and came back to life. And, um, which I say that about my accident. I, like, yeah. literally, that was my rebirth day. <laughs> like, I, right. like, and I had this, like, beautiful journey for some years. And, again, it came crashing in 10 years later. And then, but, yeah, when... It was. It started off as like because there was so lack of the self love, and yeah. I know that's cliche as that sounds. This person that comes in as like I was craving that. I missed that. That ten year, I thought I was like, oh, I can love again, and I thought I was like we were madly in love. No, we were obsessed with each other. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, were yeah. a little addicted to each other. Yeah, and then it just got out of control. The whole relationship, I was putting him in and out of rehab, helping him do this. Mm. He had to go to jail. I sat there for going down and waiting in lines to look at someone behind the glass. I think I was addicted to him. Yeah. I was addicted. And when he got out, I still took him back. It happened again. And I was like, yeah. this is the moment where everyone's like, he's going to kill you. And yeah. I'm like, and, oh and, my goodness. and I survived that. And I was like, okay, oh, now man. we're in a, just a, a space. So after that, I was like, it was another like <sighs> survival moment of like, <sighs> wake up. What are you doing? I'm so like, life is such a gift. It's so beautiful. It's like, there's so many things that are so good, and I just feel like bad, bad, bad. You know, I don't know. And then I'm like, it must be me. I'm attracting all of this. It must be me. But I'm like, change the narrative, Chantal. Come on. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Like, this is, is, is you know, I, I think I allowed it, and it became my reality. And then I was like, well, life just, I guess, is bad. Sitting here talking to you, it's like, hey, dude, there's no get out of life free car. Mm -hmm. Like, you're still battling you and yeah. your demons. Yeah. And, you know, I got electrocuted when I was a kid. I had a scar on my face. And, and, you know, I was really lucky to live. I bit. I've never said this <laughs> on film. But what happened to my lip, so now we could know, is I bit an extension cord <laughs> oh, no. when I was eight months old. Oh, my god! And um, it shot me across the, the living room. And, you know, I was supposed to die. The doctors, it was a miracle that I lived. They were like, this is a miracle that he's alive. Like, somebody could be like, wow, that's really, like, inspiring that, you know, you, you know I've yeah. been kind of deformed my whole life. And yeah. it's like, that's the least of my yeah. problems. That's Just because we look at somebody that's overcome a, a, a life changing situation and we're inspired by them don't forget that they're still dealing with life like you and me I want to live life as authentically as possible yeah. and me just putting this face on for everyone else because it makes them either feel good or whatever it's like I 
I was like, I didn't want this to turn into this dark thing and tell you all. I was like, my story's wild. No, no, it's you. important. But, yeah, yeah. You know, I could just be the inspiration and just leave all the other shit out. But I don't think that's that's where I'm at. And I don't think that's what people need. And I think that there's people out there that are struggling just like I am. Yeah. Or even worse that it's like, yo, if again, if I can do this, because when I say it was life or death. Yeah. At some point. Yeah. At a few points in my life. It was life or death. And I, I'm still trying to come out on the other side and still working on it. I don't know what the car accident feels like, but I right. do know what it feels like to keep going back to the same toxic thing that put me in a bad place. I was so afraid, and there's been so many people like Chantel, like if I could be the advocate for that, for domestic violence. And I was madly, madly, madly in love with this person. But, and I realized it was more of an addiction, right? So it's like the high highs were so high, the yeah. dopamine, the oxytocin, and then the lows, the stress, the, the, the cortisol. It's like, it's, it's like withdrawing from drugs, literally. Yes. I've never done a drug in my life. And right. I was like, if this is what the, that feels That's what like, it feels like. Like I was dying without him. Yes. And yet he did these horrific things. Just like drugs do. Horrific things. Yeah. But then when it was good, oh, it's, it is a cycle, and that's a real thing, whether it's battered women's syndrome or whatever, Stockholm. Like, I don't know these terms because I was like, is this really my reality? After everything I've done to overcome, and yet this one person on this planet, I, it's like destroyed me. Like, it, like I, that's, that's where the, 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 the therapy, that's where the, the real work needs to happen. Your whole story in abroad is meant to do some serious um, life-saving things. And I do believe you're going to affect a lot of people. Usually when I'm hiding that and I need to be this inspiration for others and, you know, show them that you could do it too or you're not alone, um, I almost canceled on you. Because I was like, I don't think I'm in a space of, like, being this inspiration right now, but at the same time, like, this is so healing in itself because I'm like, you're right. Like, I am in a place of, like, no, I never want to go back there. Yeah. I'm never going to go back there. Yeah. I've, uh, you know, promised to myself, promised to God. Like, I, I'm going to... I'm going to get through this. A lot of women don't talk about this. And the more I've opened up, I hear more. So many stories. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And, that, and it, there's so much guilt and shame in it. And it, it can happen to the, I don't know, the biggest, like, celebrity to, you know, any, like, to a lawyer, to yeah. someone like me, to, I have such a huge heart, and I, yeah, I was trapped in that. I was trapped in it. So I am on the other side, like, Literally, you know, but mentally and emotionally, yeah. I still I have work to do. I would love to connect you um, with with National Core, which is the company that yeah. is producing these podcasts and who I'm, uh, you know, worked with to create this podcast because um, National Core uh, builds uh, affordable housing throughout the country. It's a developmental company mm -hmm. and um, they have over 40,000 residents. And I don't know, but I would imagine most of the residents, I believe, if, if my facts are correct, um, are single, single mothers. Mm -hmm. um, and I would imagine that there's a lot of women that have dealt with what you're doing. And it would be amazing for you to come maybe when you're ready. Yeah. And if, if I will definitely talk to the powers that be, but I think you'd be a great person to come and meet with some of those women and tell yeah. your story and, and it's and on my share heart. It's yeah. on my heart. It's like this, like you said, that's purpose. Yeah. That's why I never felt I was enough. Cause I was like, okay, I have this thing that happened with my hand. Like that's a platform to help inspire to something, but like, wh Lord, what, what is it? What, what is it? I'm not quite sure what that is. And I think it's more not overcoming this traumatic accident, overcoming almost being beat to death by a man that <laughs> you love that I love more yeah and that you trusted yeah what situation took your breath away more was it losing your hand in an accident and overcoming those obstacles or the person you love and trusted with all your heart doing what they did to you that one that's where the power's at I think that women Men, all of us, because I'm ready to, I, I got the chills when you pointed at that. Because what that tells me is, 
I, I would guarantee there's more people in the world that have dealt with heartache through love and intimacy and domestic violence than that have been in car wrecks and have lost limbs. Yeah. And the fact that most people would think, man, what she's been through, I can't imagine. And you're sitting here saying, no, that doesn't even compare, compare to the pain that I just went through with the man I love. And I think that, Chantel, is what this interview was all about. And I think you're going to save a lot of people and you're going to keep doing it. If there's any way I could help or anything, don't hesitate. Thank I'm not just you. saying this on camera. This is, I mean it. Um, whatever I could do, man. Yeah. I, I truly no, think I'm, your I'm, power is, is, is real power. And so many people, like, you've been through so much and so much worse. I mean, there's other, like, and not to mention my father passing suddenly from COVID to you. And I met this man oh. two weeks before oh. my dad passed. A little I'm trauma sorry. bond there. So, like, right. there's, I don't even think I dealt with that. I've just been dealing with the hint, that whole thing. Right. But, yeah, I feel like I am going to get on the other side. That, that is my calling. That is my purpose. I feel that I am chosen in a weird way. Because you are. if it, all that shit, and I can still go, come on. Listen, I think you're doing what needs to be done with the steps in front of you. I think you're a beacon of light that we haven't even seen. Forget about all the marathons. and I mean, look at yeah. what you already accomplished. <laughs> Wait till you, this gets tuned out, and I could only imagine where you're going to go. And um, I want to be around for that ride. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. What is your why, and why do you keep going every day, even when you don't know if you can get out of bed? And maybe you just don't that day. Maybe you pull the covers over, but somebody at home is relating with you. And give them a little word. Life is a wild, wild ride. Um, I've experienced some of the most euphoric, uh, beautiful experiences, people, life, animals, nature, uh, travels the world like it's such a it's such a beautiful space and yet I've been in a place where I was stuck and I just couldn't see the light I couldn't see the beauty um, just one huge shadow over me and I would say I keep on keeping on because of that beauty of the universe, uh, because of that love, because of all the love that I have within myself. And I realize, like, it starts here, of course. I know that there's nothing out there that can make this happy. And once I really understood that, when my hand was taken away from me, when my father was taken away from me, when a 10-year relationship was just suddenly disappeared, loss is just something that I don't do well with. Um, but I do know that... This too shall pass, and I'm still here, and I'm still kicking, and I'm going, and I'm doing the things that I love. And when I'm, you know, I could, I could, if anyone could be a victim, it could be me. <laughs> and um, I sound like one sometimes to myself, and I pick myself back up, and I do the things I love. I go to yoga. I appreciate my dog. I see the littlest things that just bring joy to my world and joy to others, and that's my biggest thing. I feel like sometimes when it's not just about me I, and I give back to others, it's just, it's so, it's so fulfilling, and it just reminds me why I'm still here, is to give you guys, give my family, people that get to share this little sliver of space and time, um, our heart and our energy and our souls, and that's... I'm not giving up on that. Two things I get from that. I hear Chantel's story and I see her overcoming these huge obstacles, losing her hand in this, this horrific accident and still going on to pursue and overcome these obstacles, right? So I look at it and I go, okay, man, if she could do it, I could do it. But what I never see is like, she's going through the same situations we are, love, um, broken relationships, insecurities. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when we find somebody that, that inspires us, remember that they go through 
the same things that we're going through, which means they are human just like you, which means if they can do it, you can do it. We are powerful people, right? Let's keep lighting the torch for each other. Let's keep living the best lives we can and overcoming the obstacles. And always remember, if you need help, reach out. There's always someone willing to, to help out. You don't have to be in that dark place alone. So thank you for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you on the next one. FYI, finding your inspiration where we find it and we follow it. You should never stress about the problems you be facing. Everybody in the mud on the struggle trying to make it. Look into the mirror and you see your motivation Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration I'm finding inspiration And once I get a hold of it, I'll never get complacent Look into the mirror and you see the motivation Then you step into the world and you find your inspiration